probably the first Yasma with a reverse. <laughs> What's up guys, welcome back to Pat Outdoors. This is gonna be part three of the Yasma Supermoto build series. Just a quick recap in case you're new to this channel. We already installed the new plastics from Yasma, 12 inch Supermoto wheels and tires from Ride or Die along with their adjustable front suspension, custom seat cover from Bolts and Bolts, the Sotion FW22 brushless motor, a Moxon controller, and a Amorge 72 volt 20 amp hour lithium battery pack that I borrowed from my Tudio, though I'm not sure if I'm gonna stick with that battery long term. It has a peak discharge rating of 250 amps, which has supplied enough power for my Tudio to go 72 miles per hour, though I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to hit my target of 80 miles per hour with that battery. I might get a custom battery made for this thing with a slightly higher voltage. At this point, I don't have the new controller programmed yet. We've only fitted it onto the frame, wired everything up just to make sure that everything is functioning as designed and that display turns on and the throttle is reading and whatnot. So today I'm gonna to be finishing up the install, cleaning up all the plastics, making sure that it fits around the controller on the front of the frame, reinstall the fender, number plate, headlight, also gonna look at how I wanna wire the headlight. I also wanna add a taillight at some point, but my main focus today is to get the Moxon controller tuned and programmed for the parts we have installed on there so we can get this thing back on the road. Never worked with a Moxon controller before, but let's at least take a look at the interface, see if it's something that's easy to learn. Okay, definitely looks a lot different than anything I've worked with in the past. Looks like they've got quite a few different options for what you want displayed on there. But this seems to be the menu where we wanna go for changing any sort of settings. First thing I'm gonna change are the battery details just to get that out of the way. Battery DIS means discharge current settings. That's already set to 200 amps, which is the default on this controller. That should be fine with my battery since it's rated for 250 peak 200 line amps continuous. Battery charging current settings. I believe you have to set this to at least 100 to activate wheelie mode. My battery should be able to take a lot more than that, but let's just go set it to 100 for now. Next, I'm gonna go to maximum battery voltage. It came preset at 94 volts default. I'm gonna change this to 84. I think that's where my battery likes to sit when it's fully charged. I'm gonna go slightly above that. 84.2. Minimum battery comes preset at 45 volts default. We're definitely gonna set that much higher since we have a 72 volt battery installed. I'm gonna set this one to 62 for now. Okay, so to save the settings that you change, you just hold the M button and the controller restarts. But a lot of this stuff on here, I'm really not too familiar with. Some of these terms, low G phase, low G RPM, high G RPM, wheelie current, wheelie discharge, this controller just has so many things that I've never seen on other ones before. So I'm gonna get some help from Billy. So I'm personally not too familiar with how to tune these Moxon controllers. I've worked with quite a few aftermarket controllers in the past, but mostly far driver controllers or the simple plug and play noisy cricket controllers from Electro & Co. I've also done a nuclear P24F controller on my Talaria. Now the interface on the display on this thing is just a little bit too intimidating for me to tackle on my own. So I'm gonna get some help from Billy at Electric RVA. Good thing I purchased this Moxin Suron controller from Electric RVA. So I'm able to reach out to them for any sort of tuning assistance, which I believe is a service that they offer for everybody who purchases a controller from them. So if you have any technical questions about the Moxin controllers for your bike, I highly recommend reaching out to Billy at Electric RVA. What's up, man? Yo, what's up, man? Thanks for answering my call. Freaking New Year's oh, Eve. Of course. I'm always working. Oh, yeah? Are you in your shop? Yeah, I'm about to walk out here and run through a bike with you. Is it your Suron that you've been using as a sample? Yeah, I have a bunch now. I got that Tudio. He started by asking details about the aftermarket modifications made on my bike so he can get familiar with the setup before making any recommendations for the tune settings. He also walked me through all the controls, display, and available features with the Moxon controller, which I'll go over shortly. 
I also got a sneak peek of a product that they're currently working on, which is a direct bolt-on plug-and-play Moxon controller kit for a Tudio Solil, which would have been a better option to start off with rather than the Suron Light B controller, since that one's gonna be a little bit smaller housing. So it should be easier to fit on these smaller bikes, such as the Yasma IN10, maybe even the ETM RTR or a Razor. So if you are looking to put one of these controllers on a smaller bike, that might be a better option, which will be available soon. Just gonna quickly go over the tune settings that we ended up with, at least for my exact setup. Now these settings won't work on your bike if your setup is slightly different. Just use this for reference as a starting point. So the rated current, we have it set to 200. This is only acceptable because I have a Soshin motor in place, the FW22. I would not advise this if you are using this on a stock motor. Now low G, mid G, and high G is like three different settings. Think of it like eco, daily and sport. The slowest setting I have set to 200 phase amps. The middle setting I have set at 450 and the fastest setting I have set at 700 phase amps. Brake cutoff, we're not gonna worry about because I'm not even using brake sensors. Battery discharge, we actually upped it to 225. This should be okay for short bursts since my battery has a peak discharge of 250. If my BMS trips or hits a cutoff too often, I'm gonna turn that down a little bit but I'm trying to get as much power out of this thing. Battery charge, I have it set at 100 amps. Regen torque, I left that at zero. Reluctance, I left that at zero. Drive mode, I have it set to torque, which is the smoothest control ideal for daily use. I don't really like to have finicky throttles. I want it to be very easy to modulate. Motor sensor, I have it set to haul because that's what we picked. Obviously, if you have an encoder motor, use encoder. Minimum battery voltage, we turned it down to 61 volts, suspecting that it might get more battery sag, especially since it's winter. Max battery voltage, we left it alone at the 84.2. Speed calibration. This part I'm gonna have to do out on the street. It's gonna be wildly inaccurate with Whatever setup you're gonna put it on, everyone's bike is a little different, especially since this controller was designed for Suron and we're putting on a bike with 12 inch wheels on there. So I'm gonna calibrate this at a later time when we're out on the road. Now low G, mid G and high G RPM is actually field weakening. At 100%, this means that there is absolutely zero field weakening, which is what I'm gonna have on my slowest speed setting. On my middle setting, I have it set to 150 and on my fastest speed setting, I have it set to 200 which is the highest amount that it will let you go. Low G, mid G, and high G throttle refers to throttle sensitivity. It comes default at 12. He recommended turning it down slightly to 10. Reverse speed is referring to how fast you want it to go in reverse. I left that at 20%. I might even turn that down. I'm really terrible at riding backwards. Throttle protection, it comes default turned off, but I recommend turning that on just in case the throttle gets any sort of water in there. It doesn't just send your bike flying, it'll just cut the throttle completely. If it senses that there's something wrong with the readings coming from the throttle. Temp sensor, I have it set to NTC. Motor direction, I left it forward. Now you might have to switch this to reverse if your rear wheel is spinning backwards while it's doing the auto learn feature. Throttle start and throttle full is referring to the voltage readout it's getting at the starting point and at full throttle. I'll show you how to adjust that shortly. Same thing with brake start and brake full. That's referring to the voltage readout coming from the regen at its starting point and at fully depressed. Wheelie DIR, I have it set to direction one, at least for my configuration of how I have the controller mounted, how it's angled just like a Suron. Now, if your controller is bolted on your bike in a different way, you might have to experiment with a different setting. Control angle zero is like the tilt sensor on the bike. You wanna make sure that that's calibrated while both wheels are on the ground and the bike is standing straight up. I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. Minimum wheelie angle set to 10. Maximum wheelie angle set to 50. Wheelie current I have set to 350. This is just a starting point recommendation from him since that's the setting that he has on the Tudio, which has a very similar setup. Wheelie DSC is the descent speed. From default, it's set to one. We have it set to 10 which should speed up how fast the front end drops when you let go of the throttle. The default setting at one apparently feels super sketchy, like the front end hangs before it drops to make it as smooth as possible, but that can be dangerous in tight situations. I'm just gonna see how that rides and adjust from there. Now, self-learning is how the controller identifies what motor you're using. To activate self-learning mode, your bike has to be on the stand with the rear wheel off the ground. Before you activate self-learning mode, make sure to save your settings first. Let's go back to wheelie DSC and hold M. All right, now let's go back to self-learning. 
and hold M to activate. Now you're going to hear the motor make all sorts of noises. Okay, that's it. You just press M again, it'll restart the controller, and we are done with the self-learning portion. Frequency left at 20 kilohertz. Brake signal not being used. Tilt protect not being used since we don't have a tilt sensor on this bike like a Suron. Button use, I just left that at regen slash park. Gear setting, I have it set to push mode. Bat series, 20. Since this is a 72 volt battery. Startup UI, I have it set to five. There's three different ones, one, two, or five. That's referring to this display, this display, or this display. Setting five where I have it is this one. Pole pairs is five for the FW22 motor. Fan speed is not relevant for the setup. Neither is sensorless since we are running a hall sensor e-brake boost. Left that at zero. And then the last one is how you change it from kilometers to miles per hour or Celsius to Fahrenheit. I have mine set to setting four, which is miles per hour and degrees Fahrenheit. And just like that, it is fully functional. Now, if you need to get the voltage readouts for the throttle and for the regen, you would first put it in park. You would just hold down this yellow button for three seconds. You'll see that the top of the display says P now. Then we'll head over to this screen, throttle input 0.86, which is where voltage is sitting at at a starting point. When you twist it all the way, it'll show 3.9 volts. So we set the throttle range from 0.95 volt to 3.9, just to have a little bit of dead space at the very beginning. So the throttle is not so jumpy. And then for L brake input, which is the regen, it sits at 0.83 volts as a starting point. As you see, if I press it, all the way, it'll change to 3.9. So we set it to 0.93 to 3.9, same thing, just like a slight dead spot at the very beginning. And then to get out of park mode again, you just hold this for three seconds and your throttle is active again. Looking over a few items on the display here, showing that the motor is reading 55 degrees Fahrenheit and air temp in my garage is 59 degrees. That's actually pretty accurate. I'm not even gonna change that. This will just be the live power output. Tilt is showing negative 21 since the bike's on a stand right now and it's tilted forward. Since I calibrated the tilt sensor with both wheels flat on the ground, that's the zero point. So when your bike is flat on the ground, this should be showing zero without you sitting on the bike. That is actually the last thing that I wanted to show you is how to calibrate the control angle zero. So before you do this, the bike must be on the ground flat with no load on it. So I'm not sitting on it. I'm just standing over it just to make sure that it is standing straight up. And then you're gonna hold M, two seconds. It'll restart and then that'll zero out your tilt sensor. So this figure should be zero. If you're sitting on it, the angle might change, maybe two or three degrees depending on how soft your suspension is. Now the front of the bike, if it's coming up, this figure should go up. And if the back of the bike is going up or if the front suspension squatting from hitting the front brake very hard, this number should be a negative figure. See, if I put some load on the front suspension, it'll show negative one. Having that calibrated is very important, especially if you're using the wheelie feature. Now that setting is very important because that's the only way that the controller will know how far up the front of the bike is going and when to stop supplying power so you don't just loop the bike when you hammer the throttle. Just wanna quickly go over all of the controls and the buttons on the display. It's pretty simple to use. M is how you switch between the different screens. Up and down is how you toggle up and down through the different settings needed. Plus and minus is how you change the value in each setting. And holding M down is how you save it. On the left side, we got regen here. This is the wheelie control. If you hold this R down and twist the throttle, the rear wheel is actually spin backwards, so it's a reverse. Bottom left, we got the horn which we currently don't have one on the bike right now, but I will add one at a later time. I'm actually gonna delete the factory headlight switch since I did not know that there was one built in to the right-hand controls, just on the back side. Plus or minus is how you toggle through low, mid, and high. Bottom right button down here is how you get into park mode. Mode two.
probably the first Yasma with a reverse. <laughs> Well, that's definitely inaccurate, but we'll take care of the speedo calibration when we take this out for the first time. Wow, the back of the front fender just clears the Moxie controller by like a quarter inch. Not gonna lie, this is probably the most annoying part of the Yasma is how they have the factory headlight mounted on top of the top triple tree clamp. And they use the same bracket for the front number plate. So you gotta have everything lined up perfectly for the bolts to thread in. I got the center portion of the front cover all taped up since we're gonna have to take out some material from this area to make more space for the Moxon controller since it's much larger than the original far driver. We may even have to notch this upper portion as well, but I'm gonna try to take out as little bit of material as possible. I'm trying to make this thing look clean. I'm probably gonna cut all this off with an angle grinder and then smoothen things out with a Dremel. Just mock testing it against the controller after cutting out the whole center section. And we're definitely gonna have to do additional trimming, especially up top. It's still hitting the mounting points of the controller. So I'm probably just gonna have to cut the whole top section off. Once I get the front cover to seat completely flat against the frame, then I'll clean up all the edges with the Dremel. Here's a closer look at how it turned out. I ended up cutting much more material off than I anticipated, but it actually turned out pretty smooth around the edges. And this is what it looks like reinstalled. As you can see, the tolerances all around the edges of the controller, including the bottom side, are very tight. Then I have the right hand controls and throttle along with the rear brake line tucked between the controller and the cover. And on the left side, we just got the regen and left hand controls tucked here. The only two connectors we have left that are not plugged into anything are the headlight and the switch for the headlight, which we're gonna remove the whole switch assembly since we just discovered that the Moxon control already has a built-in light switch here. But I also still have to install a voltage step-down converter for a Suron so we can add a 12 volt harness to this. Cause I also wanna run a tail light on this for safety purposes and wire the headlight to the same thing. And also add a horn since we have have a button for it. So I gotta do that before I finalize and clean up the wiring under the seat. Well, unfortunately today's project is taking a little bit longer than anticipated and it is a little over 10, 30 PM and it's 23 degrees outside. So we're not gonna take this thing out to calibrate the speedometer today, especially not without a headlight installed. So in the next video, we'll install the 12 volt accessory harness that came with the Moxon controller, wire up the stock headlight, add a tail light on there along with a horn, calibrate the speedometer on the street and finally do some pulls on this thing to see how fast it can actually go with the new setup. If you guys are interested in checking out any of the parts that we used on this project so far, I'll have the full build list in the description below. You can also get yourself 5% off a Yasma IN10 or any ride or die products or even social products by using discount code PAT Outdoors. If you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor and hit that like button. If you like this kind of content, want to keep up with the Yasma IN10 or any of my other projects, consider subscribing to this channel and turn your bell notification on. But this is going to be it for today. Thank you for watching.